Hey friends, happy Tuesday. Um, I still wanted to show up for you guys today because I want to continue to love and serve you guys. And one of the ways that I feel like I can do that is by helping you and teaching you and just to help you become a better photographer so that you could just show up and be a light in your community. And so um, I hope that this is okay. I really want to answer some of you guys' questions because I know these questions especially are really, really good. Two of them um, uh, were messaged to me late last night and they're awesome questions. They're perfect. And then one of them I just saw in the group today. Um, hey, Ashley. Hey, Lisa. Um, so um, I hope y'all are okay with this. I want to just kind of show up for you um, and love you and help you. And one of the ways um, that I can do that is by just sharing the things that I've learned and my knowledge and just teaching you and helping you become better. So um, one of the questions was <laughs> reflectors. How do I use it? When do I use it? What is it for? All the things. Okay. So, hey, Zelena. Okay, so I thought that this was a really good question. Oh, and I wanted to kind of like talk to you about like the hardest light ever to talk about or to teach or to even shoot under and that it's overcast at noon, which is what we're going to be doing here in a minute. And I'm going to show you like a little trick that I do anytime I have to shoot at noon. I don't ever choose to shoot at noon, but being a wedding photographer, sometimes you have to. And, and what I look for if it's an overcast day in order to like get rid of those raccoon eyes. So that'll be after. Hopefully it'll stay overcast. It's been kind of like raining and then it's sunny and then it's overcast. And it's just been kind of like a crazy Louisiana day. Um, so Anywho, um, okay, so the question, the first question I wanted to tackle that I really think is going to be game changing for a lot of you is reflectors. What is it? Why do I need it? How do I use it? All the things was the question. Um, so first things first, let me show you my reflector that I love. Um, it is a Last Delight reflector. I got it off of Amazon. It looks like this. I believe it's a 33 inch, 32 inch. I can't remember, it's been a couple years. Um, but the reason, the reason that I love it so much is that it has a handle so that when I'm shooting, I hold it like this with my left hand and then obviously my camera with my right hand and I balance the camera on top of the reflector like that. Um, and that's how I use it. I don't need an assistant, I don't need, um, I don't need an extra pair of hands. It has a handle and so that's what it's there. One second, I think I left my refrigerator door open because I hear beeping. One sec. Okay, there we go, Brittany. Thomas always gets on to me about leaving the refrigerator open, but he's not here, so there's that. Okay, so anyways. All right, so reflectors. Okay, what are they? They are exactly what they the name says they reflect whatever light is bouncing off of it back the other direction. Hey, Lindy. Hey, Jordan. Um, does the side matter? Yes, <laughs> it does. So um, this one came with a white side, a silver side, and then it also came with like a little wrap that had like gold and things like that. Um, here's the deal. Y'all know me. The way that I teach, I'm simple. I don't need a ton of options or I will get overwhelmed and then I will be paralyzed and then I do nothing. So the only side that I use is the white side, okay? Why? Because the white side is going to reflect a light, soft, clean, white light back into my client's face, which is going to fill any shadows. Let me show you the silver side. The silver side is going to be very, um, do y'all see that light like shining? It's gonna like, look at the tip of my nose. It's gonna be very, very harsh reflection bouncing off of the silver side. The gold side is gonna reflect a gold tint back into your client's face. Um, so to keep things simple, 
I'm going to only use the white side, okay? So that's first things first. It is a white reflector with a handle. Um, we're only gonna use the white side and um, that's the basics of that. Um, I tried the gold when I first bought my reflector. Yeah, you can play around with all the colors, um, but um, the white is just the cleanest, softest reflection of white. Okay, so that's what it is. That is what a reflector is. So um, when do I use it? I use a reflector any time I'm inside, which is what I am now, and I'm gonna show you how I do it in a minute. When I'm inside or when there is sun out or when I don't have a natural reflector, um, when I'm using my 50 millimeter, okay? How do I fold it? I'm gonna show you how I fold it here in a minute, as long as I don't like smack myself in the face because it's actually kind of funny. Um, anyways, um, so that's when I use it. Anytime that the sun is out, outside, anytime I'm indoors, and I'm gonna show you why in just a minute, basically as often as possible. <laughs> um, when do I not use it is probably a better question. The times I don't use a reflector is whenever I'm shooting with a long lens. Why? Think about it. If I'm shooting with a long lens, I'm probably like 10 feet away from my clients and a reflector is going to bounce anything back into the client's face because it can't travel that far. So let's do a quick lighting lesson. Okay, so the way that light works is that it's constantly traveling at a billion miles per hour, which is inaccurate, but we'll just, you know. Light is constantly traveling, and here's the deal about light. It's traveling super duper fast, and it doesn't stop until it hits something, and then whatever it hits, it's going to reflect that color back, okay? So that's like the most kindergarten light lesson that I can possibly explain. Light's traveling super fast and whatever it hits, it's going to bounce that color back into our client's face. Okay, so if that is true, and you can see there's a window right here, and I have light, traveling through the window really fast, it's gonna keep going until it hits something, right, ref white reflector, eh, y'all, this is very coordinating, okay. Until it hits something and it's going to bounce that color back into the direction it came from. Does that make sense? So light's coming through that window, traveling at the speed of light, whoever knows the number, let us know, really fast. It's going to hit something, and then whatever color that something is, it's gonna reflect that color back into my face. Now watch what happens when I take this reflector down. Watch the shadows on this side of my face. Watch. Why do I have a shadow there? Because the light's still going that way. It's still traveling. It hasn't stopped yet. Uh, there's a wall way over there, but it's not going to do anything to reflect any kind of light back into my face. So I'm facing, I'm a 90 degrees from the window. Light's traveling this way. Y'all give me some like likes or hearts if this is making sense or if I'm just like totally confusing you. Light's traveling this way. And then we're going to make it stop by putting a reflector as close to my subject as possible. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, here's the reflector and it's stopping, which means it's filling the shadows on this side of my face, making a better look. What looks better, this or this? I look like Too Faced right now, but when I add a reflector, it fills in those shadows. So, okay, I'm so glad this is making sense. So anytime, so I'm doing my brother's and sister-in-law's newborn session in a couple days. And nine out of 10 times, newborn sessions are done indoors because 
their newborns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a window. I'm going to place them not like this in front of the window because look at look how beautiful the exposure is here. It's terrible. I'm going to place mommy and baby standing toward the window as much as I can. Like I have the curtain right here. I wish I had like an assistant. Katie Stevens, you want to come over and help me out here? Okay, so I'm going to probably stand mom and baby right next to the curtain window like this with their face closer to the window to fill any of those shadows. And then I will probably still have a reflector or Chris hold, like dad, hold the reflector to bounce some light back into um, Ashlyn and the baby's face um, to fill in any of those shadows. And it's just going to create a softer like their skin is going to glow. The, the reflector is going to fill any of those imperfections. Like y'all just look at the shadows on my face. Like my nose looks so much bigger without a reflector. Look how much smaller my nose looks just by adding a reflector. I mean, for me, that's worth it, right? So the, the reason we want a reflector, why we want a reflector is we want to bounce the light that's coming in the direction that it's coming back into the client's face. So if we're inside, we want to hold the reflector uh, parallel with the window so that it bounces light back into our client's face. Does that make sense? Um, so I have another huge reflector that uh, if you're in the coaching group, you saw that last month, that massive, huge reflector. I, it was an accident. I bought that like when I first started out. I think it was like a 50 or 60 inch reflector. Um, and I just kept it because I like using it for indoor sessions because I will just prop it up against like a chair or I'll have dad hold it. Um, because the way that I use indoor reflectors is that I want the reflector parallel to the window. Um, and then I will have, I will hold the, the one light that I have just like this with my left hand and I place my camera right here, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm bouncing any light that's falling underneath and it's going to fill the neck and nose and eyebrow shadows, okay? Does that make sense? So let me see if I can show you all that with one hand. This is complicated, <laughs> okay. So, if I'm the client, this is hard. Okay, if I'm the client, I have the reflector like this. It's going to fill in the shadow under the nose, the shadow under the chin, the shadow under the eyebrow bone, the shadow under here. So <clears throat> as many reflectors as you can put up in your session, that would be ideal and your clients would love you for it. Um, and here's the deal. Um, I used to be really, really insecure about my reflector my little, my little guy here. Um, I, cause it's kind of obnoxious, which if you've heard any of my stories or in any of my courses, like, you know, the re the story behind when I was called obnoxious one time. Anyways, it's kind of obnoxious, but y'all, it's like the biggest game changing thing that you can do for your clients. Um, so here's the cool thing about reflectors. They are like really fun for people who are not photographers. So like they want to help in like the creation process. So if I'm doing the newborn session and I'm just trying to do like um, Chris and the baby, I will give Ashlyn a job. I'm like, hey, Ashlyn, can you stand right here and hold the reflector just like this? And I'll give her a little job to do and they think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, so I'm going back before I go on to my next point about reflectors. Um, is it a 24 or a 32? I believe it's a 32. Maybe I can like, I believe it's a 32. Just looking at it, I believe it's 32 inches. Um, you winking at me? Um, probably so delayed him. Okay. Um, mine is the even bigger one. It turns into a sail when I'm outside. Yes. So the big, big, big one. I only do inside, like I just said, because it's massive and nobody can hold it. And it's, it really is obnoxious. Um, this one is, I believe the 32 inch, as you can see, I would say it's a little less than a yard. Um, and so that's the one that you want. 
I accidentally bought the giant one. Me too. I did it my first year and I just kept it because you can still use it. Um, I can never fold it back up. I'll show you how to fold it back up in a minute. Um, why do some people hold the reflector up high and some down low? Okay, great question. So this is going to move on to um, how... Now we know what the reflector is for, when we want to use the reflector, um, how it works. Basically, you'll want to hold the reflector. So think of it this way. You want to hold the reflector the opposite of what the direction of the light's coming. So in this room, the light is coming through this window. So we want to hold the reflector opposite of the direction the light is coming, which is this. If I'm outside and the sun is up guess that i cannot hold this freaking thing Renata. if the sun is up in the sky and we're outside guess the direction we're gonna hold the reflector like that the opposite of the direction that the light is coming so that is when to use a reflector now the how <laughs> is um basically two ways let's go outside I'm probably going to regret this decision in a second with going outside. It's fine. Okay. So, I feel like the sun is out. And it's, like, hot and humid. It's gross. Okay. The sun is definitely out. So, this might work. Okay. So, let's just say, y'all, the sun is, like, it is high noon. This is literally the worst time to shoot. Um, let's just say the sun is literally right behind me. I'm trying to create a shade for my client because I'm trying to shoot in a certain spot, but there's no shade. You can get someone to create shade for your clients. Look at my ground. There's shade. I have now just created shade with my reflector. Okay. So this is, uh, I've done this maybe, I can count on one hand how many times I've had to do this. It can be done. It can happen. You can basically provide shade for your clients so that you're not shooting in direct sun. So this is reason number one. You would have the reflector up high. You would have an assistant create open shade for your clients by holding the reflector, blocking the sun, giving you like a softer look. Okay. The reason you would hold it down is, um, where's the sun? It's over there. The reason you're, if, if I'm the client, this is so hard. And if my neighbors look at me, they're gonna be like, what the crap? <laughs> if you're holding it down like this, you're holding it opposite of the sun. The sun's going to come down on a reflector. And the, what does it, what happens after that? It's science. It's going to bounce the color that is hitting the reflector. So the white reflector is going to bounce a white clean light back into your client's face, filling in those shadows. I don't know if this is, if you can see it. On the video let me know if you can see it but this is no reflector the sun is practically right over my head this is no reflector this is with a reflector can you tell a difference with just the shadows underneath my eyebrow bones I'm pretty sure you can tell although it's super bright out here so I can't even really see my face in the video but if you can see it let me know this is the magic of a reflector it's going to bounce, fill in those shadows, and you want to put it opposite of the direction of the sun. Okay, now I'm sweating profusely. Okay, all right. So, does that make sense? What are our questions? How can I help you with reflector stuff? So, Dina, I hope that answers your questions on why they hold the reflector up high. It's to just basically create shade. You're basically creating a tree, a tree branch with your reflector to provide shade for your clients. Um, yay, you can see the difference. Okay, good, because I literally like couldn't see anything. At, like I couldn't even see my face. Um, I'm excited to like rewatch the video. Okay, so here we go. Um, it's not overcast anymore, as you could see, so I can't really teach you an overcast lesson, but I'm sure it'll be overcast soon that I can talk about it. Um, but I wanted to, while I'm on my porch, tell you one more thing um, about light and tips and things while I'm on the porch and I'm thinking about it. Okay, so I'm going to try to, 
Okay, so here's my porch. There it is. There's my reflector. Okay, here's my porch. Now, I have done many a session on this porch. I'm probably going to be doing an engagement session here in a couple weeks on this porch. And I wanted to show you on my face where and why I would place my clients where I place them. Okay, so here's the location that we have. And I'm going to turn you back around. Okay, so I want you to watch the light on my face as I spin around. So let's just pretend I'm the client and I'm the photographer, you're the photographer and you're trying to figure out where to place the clients for the best light on the face. So I'm going to spin around in a circle. Da, 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 da. How does this look? When does it get better? Here, right? Why is that? I'm gonna tell you why, because if you, here is their porch that I'm in, and I hope this is like making sense and I'm not like a crazy person. But if you're in the one-on-one -on -one course, we talk about that secondary fill light, which is basically open sky in front of our clients. That is going to be the biggest game changer is whenever we can have open sky in front of our client, that light, that open sky is going to fill their faces, filling in any of those shadows. So here I am on my porch facing open sky. Here I am on my porch facing the other end of the porch. So the open sky is over there. Look at the shadow here. So here is going to be my goal during their session. I want to place their faces, especially hers, toward the open sky, toward that secondary light that's going to fill the faces. Um, so... That was just another quick little open sky lighting tutorial for you. And I'm going to go back in because I'm sweating. <sighs> okay. So, um, sorry, that was kind of a tangent. Um, what are our questions about reflectors? And then, <clears throat> and then I'll show you how to fold it up. <laughs> It'll be funny. Okay. Is there different types of reflectors? I mean, there are different sizes, different shapes. There's round, there's triangle. Um, there's obviously all the colors like that come with the reflector. I just use the simple white side um, and I have the one with the handle. That's the only, if you, if you can find one, I'll try to find, I'll link the one. I know it's in the course, but I'll definitely link it here to help you guys. Um, Okay, I also, this is my sucky ring light that I was talking to you guys about. I don't know. I paid like 50 something dollars for it. I don't know if I have to like really splurge to make it work good. I don't know. But I'm going to place you here. Um, I'm going to place you here. Lisa, you're in shade, but when you look up, you see the sky. Yes, that is open shade. Okay, I'm going to place you all here. I'm going to put you in this little like holder thingy contraption hello okay and I'm gonna show you what I do <laughs> to fold up my reflector can y'all see me my mom here okay so here's a reflector what I do <laughs> to fold it up is I put obviously one hand on the handle one hand on the other side and I'm going to turn this way, so I'm gonna turn my handle side outward and I'm gonna take my other hand and pull it in. So I'm like doing opposite. So it's going to look like this. So whenever I go opposite, I'm then, my goal is to take this side and fold it on top, okay? So handle here, left hand here. I'm gonna go opposite, I'm pulling and pushing. So I'm going opposite. And I'm going to like put my shoulder out, pull my shoulder out and hold it up like, voila. And that is the bb fied version of how you fold up your reflector. So, and then when you open it, when you open your reflector, y'all listen, Linda, listen. When you open up your reflector, you need to make sure there are no small children around you or it might cause a concussion. Don't ask me how I know this, but watch what happens when you hold your reflector. 
like flops out. It's like a weapon. And I've like hurt many a child by just like, oh, I'm just gonna open my reflector and pop it out. Make sure you're not like next to a bride getting her makeup done. Make sure you're not by your toddler that's just starting to learn how to walk. Um, just stay clear of all people or important fragile things when you open up your reflector for the first time. You almost have to like, you know, like give yourself some distance. Okay, so I'm gonna do it one more time for our visual learners. You're gonna push this, pull this, and you're going to basically come on top of it like this, very aggressively, and there we go. And another, um, another funny story, I kept my reflectors open in the back of my car um, for like the first two years of my business because I just didn't have the patience or time or energy to figure out how to fold them up. So they just stayed in the back of my car open. It's fine. Um, okay. Alicia is laughing at me. I'm laughing because I asked you to do this before and I looked like an idiot, but here you are, me showing up and loving you and serving you well, even if it's just to make you laugh. Okay. Um, so Heather, you can do this. If I can figure it out, trust me when I tell you, like you can do this. Um, Emily judo chopped myself in the neck with it the first time. It happens. You can, might get a few bruises during your first reflector experience, but it gets better. Okay. Um, if you, okay guys, if you have like figured this out, if you can do this, you need to video it and post it in the group and then do a hashtag survived my reflector. Um, <laughs> just lay it on the floor and use a broom to try and open it. That's funny. Body combat reflection move. Y'all are so funny. Okay, so any other questions about reflectors, when we need to use it, why we need to use it, how we need to use it, speak now, forever hold your peace. Reflectors 101 is what we just talked about if you're tuning in. Okay, Um. what was our other questions? Let me go see, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Y'all are sitting on my thing, so I have all my hands. Second question was about in, hold on, wait. How far into your journey should you get a reflector? I mean, this thing is probably one of the most inexpensive pieces of equipment you're gonna buy <laughs> during your journey. Um, so I say the sooner the better. Like I'm telling you, it makes the biggest difference in all of your photos, seriously. Um, Y'all saw what it did with the indoor light. Y'all saw what it did on the overcast day. Y'all saw what it did when I needed it. Like, it's just a really, really good tool to have. And I want to say that this was like less than $40. Uh, I got it on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Um, I have a huge green screen backdrop I use for my photo booth. Oh my gosh, y'all. I look crazy trying to fold that thing up after an event. We do what we got to do. It's fine. Um, just tell everybody, look away, look away. Um, good, Tess, I'm glad you got something out of it. Lindsay, mine has a silver side, gold side, and white. When should you use each? I only use white. I keep it simple. I don't even play with the other silver and gold side. I just do the white side. Um, basically, the silver side can be a harsher light, and the gold side is going to literally reflect gold. <laughs> so, I just use the white side, and it's just a clean, even light all the way around. Um, leaving them open seems like a good idea. Yeah, leave them open. Keep them in the back of your car and just leave them, just, you know, have them when you need them. Um, okay. What else? Can y'all see the, look at this. Look, watch my face. We're going to do a pink reflector now. Just to, just for fun. Do you see this? What color is bouncing back into my face? Pink. So the light's traveling, hitting this, making myself pink, okay? That's why I always tell dads or the groom, the man to wear a white shirt. Why? Because it's a reflector and it makes mama look pretty. Okay, 
So next question is indoor light. Help me with indoor light. So uh, I kind of talked about this at the very beginning of the live, but I'll just do a quick, my tips. Um, this is basically me the cliff notes of the indoor light lesson from the 101 course. So indoor light. What you need to know about indoor light is number one, you need to find a really big window, the biggest window you can find in one of the rooms of the house or the place that you're at. Really big window, why? That's where natural light is coming from. Tip number two, I need you to turn off all of the tungsten lights that are gonna cause weird color casts in your natural light image. So if we're trying to make a natural light image and we're gonna get a big open window, we don't want an orange tungsten light to be sitting in our client's hair or our, their cheekbones as it's coming down. The orange tungsten light, that's bad. So turn off the tungsten lights in the room. Another thing, find a room that doesn't have obnoxious colored walls. Why? Because of reflection that we just learned about. So if you can find a room that is not red, orange, pink, those are bad rooms. We don't wanna shoot indoor there, why? Because we're gonna have pink reflections, orange reflections in our clients fit green. Y'all, just, if you can find a room that's white, and I even ask my clients before I show up at their homes, hey, I would love to do this lifestyle session for you. Do you have a room with a big window and neutral colored light walls? And if they're like, no, we don't, all of our walls are green, then I'll be like, okay, well then maybe we can do them on your front porch. <laughs> um, the reason is because anytime clients um, are in a green room, red room, whatever colored room, it's gonna reflect that color back in their face. So big, big window, white, light colored walls, turn off the tungsten lights. Another thing, get out your reflector. Why? Because especially if there's only one room in, one window in the room, we need extra light bouncing, filling up any of these shadows, right? So bring your reflector to any kind of indoor lighting uh, session that you might have. Um, last thing is I need you to face your client toward the window, 45 degrees to the window or 90 degrees to the window. Okay. Did y'all see my face when I just did all of those? So this is toward the window. This is 45 degrees from the window. This is 90 degrees from the window. Okay, and if you have your handy dandy reflector that you just learned how to use, you can fill in any of those shadows when they're this. Here's the problem. If you go further than 90 degrees, look at my face, look at the haziness. This is gonna be really hard. Now, you can create a silhouette picture. You know, like, watch this. Watch me. Let's just say I'm a bride and I've got a really, really long, pretty dress and I go and I do one of these. Could you tell what I was doing? I can't tell if you can tell what I was doing, but you can create a silhouette image with your client um, against the window. But if you're trying to do one of those, especially if you're a light and airy photographer, you're gonna want as much light and as many shadows filled as possible. Um, the more you face away from the window, the more um, shadows are gonna be seen in your photo. So definitely play with it, but know the basics of light and where to face your clients. Another thing that I like to do um, as the photographer is I typically find the window and I'm shooting like against the window, which means my clients are this way. So does that make sense? It's so hard teaching you guys all of this by myself. I need someone to come over here and just like be my model every day. Um, thank you, Naomi. Um, so <laughs> um, 
Yeah, Ashley says, that's why clients don't wear red. So she's talking about reflection. This is, I always tell my clients, and if you have any of my style guides from the Business and Branding course, like that's why in all the style guide section, I say like, please do not wear red, orange, because even if they're wearing them as the client, if they're wearing a red dress and it's like up here and the sun is harsh, it could reflect red back into their chin, their cheeks, their eyebrows, all the things. And it's really hard to edit and it's just a nightmare. Um, or if the husband is wearing red and they're facing each other and we're like, we're in love, but that red shirt is going to reflect back into the bride's face. And so, um, so Sarah says, what metering mode is the best to shoot in? Okay. So on average, 99% of the time, I think center weighted metering is the easiest metering mode to use overall but when you are using the expo disc which is something that i use indoors and i teach that in the one-on-one course so if like you have no idea what i'm talking about like i'm telling you the expo disc indoors is like game changing anytime i use the expo disc indoors i change it to matrix metering or evaluative metering basically what that's doing is it's taking parts each part of the frame and it's like giving an average of the exposure that I need. And when I'm shooting indoors with my expo disc, it's just game changing. And so if you're in the one-on-one -on -one course and you're like, oh, I forgot about all that, go back and rewatch the metering modes lesson and the custom white balance lesson with the expo disc and the indoor lesson and just like tie them all together because it's gonna make so much more sense. If they let me, I don't think they're going to let me because they're kind of private, but if my brother and my sister-in-law let me, I would love to like video the newborn session. I don't know if they will or not, but we'll see. You'll know if I, if I'm allowed. Um, say, okay. So Sam says, say you have a mom and baby on a bed at 90 degree angle from the window. Do you still use a small reflector? Or get a big one. So if the mom and baby is on a bed, okay, and they're 90 degrees to the window. So this is, a lot of bedrooms are set up like this. So let's just do it. Okay, my bedroom is not set up like this, so I can't do it. But let's just pretend, we can pretend, right? This is the bed, I'm the mom, here's the baby, and the window's coming this way. I would have dad, brother, bring an assistant or someone get one of those big reflectors and just hold it on right outside the frame. Like just right outside. Like I would have them be like, come a little bit closer, closer. And when they're in the frame, be like, okay, now reflector man, I'm going to have you step out just an inch because the closer your reflector is to the clients, the more light will fill in those shadows. Okay. Watch my face. So that is, um, in my opinion, um, getting like a big one. I mean, this isn't a big one, um, but it's, it's big enough. Um, you could use a small one for sure, Sam. I think I like misunderstood your question, but you can definitely get a small one. Um, I like to have the big one just because. Um, Lindsay, I love your house. Um, thank you. I, um, just for aspiration purposes, I built this house just two years after I started my photography business, saving all my photography money. So you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, it was one of those like things that I'm very, very, very proud of. And I think photography and the life that photography gave me for it. Um, so Lindsay, I would love to see you do a newborn shoot. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask permission. Ask really nice. Sam, thank you. I had no clue how to do this alone. Need a helper. Yeah. Um, so Thomas has come with me to quite a few sessions. Um, and he's just kind of like my assistant. I'm going to say that like he just does whatever I tell him to do. Uh, so um, he'll shoot behind the scenes. Um, if you're in the coaching group, you know the power of that. He'll shoot um, like different angles of my clients. And then also if I'm thirsty, he'll get me some water. He'll hold the reflector. It's just nice to, and you can, if you 
can't, if your husband is like staying home watching the kids or he doesn't want to come, you can like easily hire a high school student for like eight bucks an hour to come be your assistant and just tell them what to do. Um, or get with your business bestie and y'all like help each other. Um, okay. Any other questions about indoor light and all the things? Do you shoot weddings alone or with an assistant? I don't shoot weddings alone. I always usually have somebody with me. For a long time, it was Thomas. He has since then retired himself from the business. Um, but it's fine because I have a lot of mastermind girls that live around here that I just like bring along with me um, as second shooters and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I can shoot it alone. It's more of like an insurance policy for myself if I bring somebody like in case I ate some bad tacos the night before and like I am like unavailable all day long to shoot like they're there or if like my camera like breaks like they're there with the camera or like just for any reason if I miss a shot they're there um so questions any more questions about indoor light or reflectors um this is so fun thank you guys for letting me teach y'all today um my fiance wants a red suit for our wedding in October. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you kind of have to like give him what he wants. Um, just realize that you might have some red casts in your face. Um, maybe that'll like deter him from wanting that. But a white suit. Now, that is something that make you look real good. Um, okay. Last question, and then I'm gonna go eat some lunch. What was it? Here we go. Why can't I get far back? Okay, so here was she, it was a long question, but I kind of like did it here. Okay, so her question was whenever she shoots up close, the the client looks like she's in focus, but when she pulls back, the client doesn't look as sharp as if she is close up. So Here's the deal. Number one, it could 100% just be the lens. Lenses, especially certain focal length lenses, like to be up close and personal with the client. And as the further that it gets back, it's not as friendly. <laughs> it doesn't do its job as well as when it's up close. So that's like the first thing that I would say. Another thing that I would say is um, so, so hold on before I go on. So if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter and you're getting like perfect, like portrait shots, but when they're scooped back, you're getting blurred images. My suggestion to you would be switch to a 35 millimeter to get the full length without scooting way far back and losing that sharpness of the photo. So that's an option that you can do is just switch the lens. That way you don't have to move your feet. You're just switching the lens and you're going to get the full body shot with the sharpness of the photo. Now, as far as the blurriness goes, that has a lot to do with the depth of field that your lens can give you. Meaning, if I'm shooting with an 85 millimeter lens and I'm shooting like this close to you, guess what? Everything literally is going to be so blurry because of the closeness of the client and the photographer. The further I go back from the client, the less, uh, blurry it's going to look because of the distance between the client and the photographer. Um, so there's also that. Here's my suggestion. As long as your image is in focus as just a framed image without you zooming in, give it to your client and move on. Your clients aren't zooming in and counting eyelashes whenever they're this big in this big of a frame. You know what I'm saying? So don't beat yourself up. I used to do that all the time and realize that like no one is zooming and counting their eyelashes as much as I am. So give yourself some grace and don't beat yourself up over it. Um, Lindy says, which lens gives you the bulk of far back? The long lenses. So that could be uh, 85 millimeter a 135 millimeter, a 70 to 200 millimeter, the longer the lens, the more of that compression you're going to get. 
Um, and that means that your client is going to pop off as super sharp and everything behind them is gonna look really big and blurry and it's beautiful. My 135 millimeter lens is like insane. It's so beautiful. Um, and that's why I like the 85 millimeter as just like a normal portrait lens because it's not too long. It's just right. Not too long, not too short. It's just right. Um, yes, the 85 is freaking amazing. It's my little favorite child. So, okay. Um, that was all the questions that I have for you guys or that you had for me. I hope this was helpful. We've been going on for quite some time now, so I don't want to take up your entire day, but um, thank you guys for letting me show up for you. Thank you for letting me teach. Like this may, has made me feel so much better um, with just like all the sadness that's happening in our country. And so I just, I really appreciate y'all letting me show up today and doing something that I love to do. Um, um, Rebecca says, will a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens work with a crop frame? I have a Nikon D3300 or would you recommend another one? Okay, so yes, it will work on, the, on your crop frame. It's just going to act like a longer lens. It's going to act like a 85. I don't know the exact proportions. Somebody in here I'm sure does. Um, meaning when you put a 50 millimeter on your camera, on your crop frame camera, you're going to like have to scoot way far back for you to have um, the person in the frame. If you have the 50 millimeter on a full frame camera, it's going to act like a 50 millimeter lens, meaning you don't have to scoot far back. You'll probably just be right here to get the person in the frame. Does that make sense? I don't know if I explained that the right way or a way that you understood. Um, okay. Thank you, great life. Oh, y'all, I just love y'all guys so much. I do. Um, y'all are like making my freaking day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it will shoot more like an 85. Yes, it will. Terry Crosby, hey mom. Mom, you should come over and be my model. I live right next door to my mom. Next time we do a live, I'll get my mom over here. And she'll be the model. So I don't have to like be the model and the photographer and holding the, ref the reflector and acting like an idiot. Um, cool. All right. Rebecca, should I get a different one? Um, a different lens? Yeah, I would suggest, I guess with a crop frame, if you want more of like a normal looking versatile lens, a 35 millimeter 1.8 will be a lot uh, more versatile than the 50, although the 50 just is an overall better lens, but yeah, I think do the 35. Um, yeah, fix your hair, mama. Come over and bring some roast beef because I'm hungry. So, um, watching your live makes my work, work day go faster. Y'all doing a live makes my work day go faster. Okay, do you recommend the 85 1.8 or the 1.2? Does it make much of a difference in a full frame camera? <sighs> okay, so I feel like it totally depends on the brand and the lens. Meaning, is all I'm going to say. Technically, the lower the aperture that your lens goes, the better quality of the glass that's on your lens. Technically, that's like what they say, the people say, the manufacturers say, the price says, all things. Now, I have experienced where the 50 millimeter 1.4 versus the 50 millimeter 1.8, the 1.4 wasn't any better than 1.8. My best advice for buying lenses is to buy the one that has the best reviews and that you can afford. If you can afford the 1.2, go for it. Um, as long as the reviews show otherwise. I didn't really like believe the 1.4 reviews because the, the reviews said it's not any better than the 1.8. And I'm like, but it's a 1.4. It's a lower, the glass should be better. All the things should be better. It's more, it's 10 times more expensive. Like. Um, I didn't really listen to the reviews. I spent the money and I regretted it after. I uh, ended up selling it and I just still have, I still use the very first lens that I ever purchased to this day. I will use it next week when I do the newborn session. I will use it at my engagement session the following week. 
Um, it's the very first lens I've ever had and I just use Chris Brew yet to calibrate it for me every summer, which means I probably need to get with you Chris next month. Um, and it's still been very, very faithful. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Michelle advice on shooting in bright light settings. Okay. So I suggest doing the area settings every single time, which means if you have bright light, um, you're going to want a lower aperture to soften the light. A lower aperture automatically softens the light for you. So it's not as harsh. So I would shoot the lowest aperture that you can have with the amount of people that you have in the frame. So let's just say 2.0. Um, your ISO is going to be the lowest that it needs to be. And y'all, I explained this in depth in the manual mode lesson. If you're in our email list, you've got that completely for free yesterday. So hopefully you can go back and rewatch it. Um, but it's definitely obviously in the course. Um, so aperture at 1.8, 2.0, lower aperture is going to soften that harshness of the bright, bright, bright sun. Um, and then your ISO needs to be as low as you can go because it's telling your camera sensor, hey, don't pick up the, any extra light. So I would say ISO around 100. And then your shutter speed needs to be as fast as it can go so it's not soaking up any more light. So metering to zero, you're probably going to get a fast shutter speed. If you're still overexposed, then go back down and up that aperture. The biggest suggestion with bright light is making sure that you're in good light while you're in bright light, which means find that open shade. I have a YouTube video on it. I talk about it all the time. Like you could go back and rewatch some of the videos that I've posted up in here. Open shade, there's a blog about it. If you go to the blog um, resources tab, there's a blog, there's a YouTube video. Definitely in the course, um, that's gonna be the biggest game changing, game changing secret shooting in bright light is making sure that sun is behind you and your client is in open shade. Okay. Oh dang, a bear's roast beef sandwich is needed. <laughs> she, my mom makes the best like roast rice and gravy with potatoes and carrots kind of thing. Like, oh, I don't know, she probably doesn't have any left for me. Um, and then Dina says, I want to get a mirrorless camera, but all the lenses are $2,000. Yeah, um, um, Nikon mirror, mirrored cameras are still good. Um, what can I get with an 85 1.8 on crop frame? Is it worth it on a crop? Nope, nope. You definitely put your money and your dollars instead of buying more lenses. When you're starting accumulating money from sessions and stuff, save it for a full frame camera. I promise you, y'all, I would not steer you wrong on this. You need a full frame camera. It is like night and day. It, you're, the photographer makes the image. Okay, we get it, all things, like, it's true. But going from shooting with a crop frame camera to going to shooting with a full frame camera is like, I'm trying to, like, think of a really quick analogy, but my brain hurts and I can't really think of a quick analogy, but it's freaking life changing. Ask anyone who has upgraded from a crop frame to a full frame and they're going to tell you, yes, friend, <laughs> do the full frame. So instead of purchasing the 85, use that money to purchase a full frame. Um, your images are going to get better. You're going to get more confident. You're going to book more sessions and then you can eventually buy the 85. Um, when in a session, I forget a lot. Yeah, because you're nervous and you're in front of people. I can't tell you how many embarrassing stories that I have in a session where I have had word vomit. I have forgotten my settings. I forgot my name. I mean, it is what it is and you get better. I promise. It'll get better. Um, I don't have any shade. Okay, if you don't have any, if you're just in a wide open beach, no trees, no buildings anywhere nearby. What you wanna do, and this is in the harsh light module. If you're in the course, just go to the harsh light, like full sun module and I'll teach you exactly what to do step by step. But to be very quick in the Cliff Notes version, make sure you have the sun behind your client to the left or to the right. So that means not directly behind them because they're gonna look like, you know, you know, Mother Mary with like a halo and it's gonna get hazy and you might get lens flare. All the things. Make sure the sun is behind your client to the left or to the right. Make sure you have a lens hood on your camera and make sure that you have a reflector. Circling back to the beginning of the slide. Um, that's going to make the biggest difference in your photos. Okay. Um, 
literally mind blowing. I think you're talking about the full frame camera. Okay, but I did buy the 51.8 for the crop frame. That's fine, you can rock it. Um, I think Alicia had her 50 millimeter with her crop frame for like a good six months before she upgraded. You got it, you can do it, you can still work with it. Um, Lisa, I just upgraded to a full frame and I could not believe the color and the light quality. There's your review. So, okay friends, thank you again for letting me show up for you guys. Um, this was great. I'm gonna be back here tomorrow if you're okay with it, um, answering more questions teaching you a little nugget because it's photography week and Brittany Bruce education land and just hoping to love you, serve you well, and just help you become a better photographer so that you can be a light in your community. So love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're on our email list because tomorrow's lesson is about light. Today's lesson was about focus. So lots of little lessons being kind of dropped into your inbox to help you kind of again, push you forward. So love you guys. I'll talk to you soon.